All right, this is take three. My iPad's being a little dumb today, but today we're going to continue with our chapter 10 questions and actually start with the book. So we want to go find our slides. As always, push the square in the upper right-hand corner and open up your slide. Yesterday, you were supposed to read the appendix article story. It can be accessed here. Open that link for a Google Doc, or if you prefer, open this link for a PDF. But we're in the book work, so I'm going to go ahead and split screen with Google Classroom. Hit the X down. There's the appendix article, but the top red link is the PDF for the book page. Our first question, question six, is on a math break. And here we hear, see that air has typically 4,000 bacteria per cubic meter, and Cindy's bedroom is 3 by 4 by 2.5 meters. So they multiplied those to figure out that Cindy's bedroom is 30 meters cubed. They already did half the math for you. If each cubic meter has 4,000 bacteria and her room is 30 meters cubed, you need one more step to figure out how many bacteria could be floating around in her room. The next question is about endospores. Most bacteria can't do this, but a few bacteria, if given the right conditions, will form endospores that can survive pretty nasty things. In fact, they've sent them out into space and they're fine. The oldest active endospore, an endospore that we woke up, because making an endospore is basically putting your life on pause, is in the picture. Question eight, bacterial shapes are how they were identified for a long time before we had good DNA technology. These are Latin names, bacilli, cosi, spirilla, and then flagellum isn't a shape, it's an extension of part that some bacteria have. You just need to tell me what they mean in English. What shapes are they? And flagellum, what does that word mean in English? So look for quotations and look for explanations. Next up, bacteria generally consume other things. Not all of them, but that means to eat. So there are two basic groups of eating bacteria, whereas cyanobacteria are not eaters. So why were they considered plants? So that question nine is there. Question 10 is about archaea. Now the book calls them archaea bacteria, which is technically wrong. These are their fancy names, methanogens, halophiles, thermophiles, that the book didn't think you could handle. Methanogens should be self-explanatory. What do they do in one or two words? What, it, what is their thing? Halophile, phile means to love. Thermophile, therm is like thermometer, that's a hint. And phile, again, means to love. They love certain ridiculous conditions. So that's the book work. If you want to get ahead, you're more than welcome. This is tomorrow's work. And then we're going to take notes on Friday and Monday we have this. So it's a slide per day, five questions per day. It's really easy. Most of you should finish and have time to possibly play a gim kit. But if you're waiting for us to play a gim kit, I recommend watching how we're surrounded by microbes. Microbes are constantly around us in the air and when it rains, they literally rain down on us. That same video can be accessed on the website. The uh, mid-marking period is this Friday, so if you have time, double-check your grades and make sure you don't have any big zeros hanging over your head. And if you have questions, Zoom, email, or talk to me in class.